Hello and welcome to another Econ Elastic video. I'm Joe. And I'm Andrew. This video is our final video in our three part series about the algorithm demand curve. So if you haven't checked out our first two videos, the first one being on the aggregate demand curve and some explanation on the GDP deflator, and then our second video on the income and substitution effects, we would recommend you go and check those out first. So in this video, then, we are going to be looking at the causes of a movement and a shift in the aggregate demand curve. <music> So at this point, we know that the aggregate demand curve, the AD curve, is downward sloping, i.e. the income and substitution effects of a rise in the general price level will cause the aggregate demand for goods and services to fall. But there is something to know. And what is that, Joe? So the bigger the income and substitution effect, the more elastic the AD curve will become, which will look something like this on the graph. So we've got the graph behind me, as usual, with a demand and supply graph. We've got price on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis, and very simply, we've got one aggregate demand curve. And from this, we know that the income and substitution effects have been quite large because we can see a relatively elastic demand curve, uh, aggregate demand curve here, i.e. it is relatively shallow. However, if the income and substitution effect was smaller, then we would see an inelastic demand curve. So Andrew's just going to draw that on for us now. So you can see it's a lot steeper than the elastic uh, aggregate demand curve. So we've now replaced the elastic and inelastic demand curve with just a relatively standard looking aggregate demand curve, as you can see. Yeah, so a movement along the aggregate demand curve it simply occurs from a change in price. So expanding on what Joe said, if there was an increase in price, say from P1 here to P2, there would actually be a movement along the demand curve, no shift, just a movement along up the demand curve, which would cause a decrease in quantity demanded. And conversely, if the price decrease, we would see a movement down the demand curve. So we'd go from, let's say, P2 back down to P1, and you'll see the quantity increase. We're now going to shift our attention to shifts in the aggregate demand curve, pun intended. Just like the demand curve for individual goods, the aggregate demand curve can also shift to the left or to the right. So Andrew's drawn us a rightward shift in the AD curve on the board. So as you can see, the AD1 curve has shifted to the right, AD2, and this means that every price level, there is a higher aggregate demand. So right. let's look at the price P1. So P1 on AD1 is at Q1, so that's quantity demanded. Now, yeah. because of the rightward shift, the price level, the same price level, P1, uh, if you go along, as Andrew's done on the graph, you'll get to quantity two. So quantity's increased. However, the price has remained the same. And the same occurs if there's a leftward shift in the demand, in the aggregate demand curve. So if we imagine it went from 82 back to 81, let's take another price level as this applies to any price level uh, on the graph. If you went from P2, we would have a quantity demanded of Q4. And if you shift the leftwards, we'd now, at the same price level of P2, have a lower quantity, quantity demanded of Q3. So a shift in the demand curve, such as the one that we just showed you, will occur if there is a change in any of its components at any given price level. So just as a quick reminder, the components of, of aggregate demand consist of consumption, which is C, investment, yep. which is I, uh, government expenditure, which is G, and then we've got exports and imports, and it will be uh, exports, which is X, minus imports, which is M. So just to take you through a few examples, if, say, the government announced a new infrastructure project where it was going to repair all the roads and all the railways, this would increase the G component of the AD equation and cause a shift or rightward shift in the aggregate demand curve. Yeah, all other things remaining equal. 
Sure. And another example uh, may be income tax is reduced, therefore people have more disposable income and they can spend more. So that means consumption can increase. So that's C, increasing the aggregate demand. So let's say another example is if inflation starts to get back to the target of 2%, yeah. and businesses then can have more confidence because they understand what the future is going to look like and therefore they may actually be inclined to invest more so therefore i investment will increase and therefore aggregate demand will increase remain everything else remaining equal a final example is if the great british pound went down in value our exports would now be more competitive on a global scale our exports would increase we would have less purchasing power uh, to, for, to purchase imports, so our imports would decrease. Overall, this would cause an increase in aggregate demand, a rightward shift in aggregate demand, all things equal. So in summary, all these examples show that the aggregate demand shift into the right. So aggregate demand is overall increasing at every price. Uh, and if any of these components of aggregate demand, whether that be C, uh, I, G, uh, were to decrease then we would see a leftward shift in the aggregate demand curve which would mean that quantity at every price decreases thanks for watching our econ elastic videos please check out our other youtube videos on a range of economic topics don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel please also check out our website at econelastic.com the link will be in the description for you this is where you'll find our step-by-step -step dissertation writing guide which is suitable not just for economics but, but for a whole host of degree subjects and it's where you can also book us personally for two-to-one tutoring sessions see you in the next video